How do folks? I thought I'd give this voiceover thing another go to see how it cracks on. So today we're looking at the Afonopelma Simoni or the Costa Rican Zebra, also known as the Striped Knee Tarantula. With this one, as the name suggests, it does come from around Costa Rica, Central America kind of area, which does make it a New World Tarantula, so its venom's not really medical significant, but its urticating hairs, with me personally, I get really bad reactions to. Uh, I seem to have that with almost all the New World Tarantulas, but you know, part and parcel. Now this is a predominantly terrestrial tarantula, so that means that it's going to spend most of its time just walking around on the floor, so you don't really want to build it up too high in its enclosure. Make sure it's got a good few inches of substrate and just a few little bits and bobs for it to climb, because even with terrestrial tarantulas, one thing you'll notice is they do occasionally like to climb up, they do like to make little burrows every now and again, they just like to go wherever they feel safe really. So with this species, one thing you'll notice is where it gets its name from, and that's definitely from the stripes that you can see on its knees. I mean, it's predominantly a black tarantula, it's got a little bit of a golden hue on it, sometimes it looks a little bit blue or green, but the most striking feature is definitely the stripes on its knee, which are almost white or golden colour, depending on, well, the tarantula itself, kind of an individualistic kind of thing. These are a fairly, you know, hardy little tarantula, we've never had any issues with him. Or her, we're not sure which it is yet really. I think it might be female actually, I'll have to double check that. But one thing I will say is it's got quite a nice little range of temperature because of where it comes from. The temperatures can be around 16.7 degrees Celsius up to 31 degrees Celsius, anywhere around there. So we tend to keep pretty much all of our tarantulas in an 18 to 22 degrees kind of limbo if you like. For substrate, what we like to do is usually just mostly use topsoil. Uh, that seems to work the best, you know, just dry it all out over a couple of days and then compact it into the enclosure. We also mix a tiny bit of cocoa fibre in there if we've got some laying about. But that's more or less just up to choice. The growth rate of this tarantula is pretty much a medium sort of time frame. You know, if you think of any of the uh, the Tillicottles as they're known now, or the Brachypelmas, uh, Gramostolas, things like that. They don't grow super fast, but they do still grow, and when they grow they're quite large. Uh, this one gets to about, I think it's six and a half, seven, cent seven inches, not centimetres, what am I talking about? So it does get quite large. This one, as you can see, it's probably about, I'd say, the size of the palm of my hand. Maybe a little bit larger than that. As far as temperaments go, I mean it is a new world so it's not going to be hyper skittish or anything like that like you get from any of the old worlds. Uh, it's fairly docile, it really is. I mean I've had this one on my hand a couple of times. I don't recommend handling any tarantulas but sometimes they just like to come out for a walk. As soon as you start cleaning enclosures or changing water dishes, this one does have a tendency to sort of walk out. A little side note on this one with its water dish. Um, you might notice in the video every now and again whenever you see the water dish that it's actually buried it constantly. So what this one likes to do is just dig up a great clump of dirt from the side of its enclosure, drag it over to its water dish and just dump the dirt straight in there. Don't know why it does that, a few of our tarantulas do, I think there's just protesting more than anything. As for feeding, we'll offer it food once a week. Um, it's usually going to take it. I mean, we'll give it a cricket or we'll give it a dubia roach or a locust or, you know, a mario worm, anything like that, and it'll take it down almost every time. A few other little points with this one. It loves to redecorate, so no matter what we do with its enclosure, it just changes it up. That's all for now. Thanks. Bye, folks.